guys and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who don't know, if you are new here, I am currently in my final year studying biochemistry at the University of Bath and what I'm going to be doing today is the second year equivalent of my So You Want to Study Biochemistry What Is It All About video. So I filmed this at the end of my first year, essentially just going through um, the logistics, the day-to-day -day of studying biochemistry. The sort of information that you can't necessarily get on a website, that you can try and get on an open day, but that really you need to hear from someone who studied it. So if you are looking to study a bioscience, looking to come to Bath perhaps, though obviously all degrees here are very different, may give you a flavour of, of uni I guess, um, or you're just nosy like me, then hi, welcome and let's get on with it. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and give this a thumbs up if you enjoy it, if it was useful if you had a good time being nosy. So as I said, obviously I did this for the first year and this is going to be my video recapping last year. So if you want to watch the first one first and then this one, go ahead. It doesn't have to be in order. Hopefully this just gives you a really good flavour of what it is actually like to study the subject. So last year I took 10 modules. I took five in each semester. My first semester being five um, like mixed coursework and exam modules so I had five exams and my second semester being three that had coursework and exams and two that were entirely coursework based which was different from first year. So let me tell you the modules that I did so that you get a flavour of the kind of thing that you could be doing. Protein structure, DNA making, breaking and disease, the dynamic cell, plant physiology and biochemistry, infection and immunity, microbiology, um, biochemical problems and bioinformatics, enzymology, practical molecular biology, immunology, which was infection and immunity too, and molecular and cellular neuroscience. So I don't feel the need to like tell you super in depth what all of those actually had in them because that is on the website. If you want to, I don't know if you know this, but you can search up the like university catalogue for any uni, I think, um, go on and like click the course code and then go through to the year you want find the module and it pretty much lays out what is covered in that module. I think more useful than that is to tell you about like the exams, my tutorials, the types of coursework that I had to do, how much time that took up and that kind of thing. Before though briefly just like a little bit of information um, about each one that's more personal and more of an opinion just so you get a flavour of that because going on those programme catalogues gives you what you do in them but maybe not necessarily what you want to know. So protein structure was basically exactly what it says on the tin and there's not much more to say about that. It was a load of lectures about protein structure and then some questions in the exam. Um, DNA making, breaking and disease was a set of lectures that covered like a lot of different topics. It was basically a cancer topic and we covered lots of different things that were related and like key terms that were linked. And then in the exam, we had a very strange exam format for this one where we had to draw, we had to write like a little abstract, I think, explaining a diagram and then draw like another part of the diagram or a summary diagram. Um, it basically wasn't, you couldn't really revise unless you'd looked at the topics that we'd studied in the lectures but I personally didn't like spend loads of time revising this one and I still did fine. Just an example that sometimes it's not just content learning but that is fairly rare in this particular degree. Dynamic cell again a load of content, an MCQ and then an essay question I believe. Plant, physiology and biochemistry exactly the same just a load of content. Um, infection and immunity the microbiology one the exact same. As you can tell like that is the pattern with biochem you go in you learn a load of stuff and then you have to write essays on it. Um, the biochemical problems and bioinformatics was the bane of my life. It was coursework every single week, um, stuff that we'd basically never done before but that was supposed to be loosely based on topics we'd done. It was really, I didn't enjoy it at all. It, I found it very difficult. It was stuff like we'd get a few different questions and have to use like different softwares to make graphs and then answer the questions based on that. But on a topic we maybe hadn't necessarily completely covered, which was really difficult. Um, but I think I learnt new skills in that topic. It just dragged down my overall mark because I am a busy person. So I don't have a lot of time every week, whereas I am good at revising for exams. Enzymology was also extremely difficult for me. Um, it was a lot of like graphs and diagrams and stuff and then taking that and applying it to like an essay based question to explain how something worked. I found it really difficult. It was sort of chemistry but without the bits of chemistry that I like 
I didn't enjoy it, but there you go. Um, the practical molecular biology was a week's worth of labs, so we went into the lab every day for a week and then wrote up a report um, and then answered some like separate questions as well. The immunology one was the same as the first semester's one, was a load of content, um, and the molecular and cellular neuroscience was again the same, just learning lots of stuff um, and then applying it. So like I've mentioned, the exams were pretty much all in the format of a bit of MCQ at the start and then some fat essays, either one or two. They give you a big old topic. I'll put one on screen now, for example, for you. And then you use all your knowledge to write an essay answer. They're about a few pages long, like three-ish pages, I would say, but obviously it depends on your writing and stuff. And then, like I said, the DNA exam was slightly rogue um, in that sense, but those are pretty much how biochem exams work. So to talk about like labs and coursework, I think this is one of people's like biggest questions. I've written a little list here of stuff that I did. Um, I've written here, this year, no lab reports, because that is true. I didn't have to write a full lab report for a single module um, in my second year. Instead, there was a lot of booklets. You filled stuff in as you went, and then you like were supposed to add additional pages with extra writing and extra like justification and graphs and all that sort of thing. It was very difficult, and it was difficult at the start as well to realize that you had to put that much extra effort in instead of just filling out the booklet. But um, obviously I explained already the biochemical problems, which was every week. We also had a lot of like typing up data and then presenting it and like sorting through a crazy amount of data so the neuroscience module in particular we basically had numbers after numbers after numbers that we had to process present and then answer a couple of questions at the end and that was 20 percent of that module we also did some bioinformatics as part of the problem so a lot of like computer based stuff which would, would have been useful if i'd then gone on to do like a placement that used that or wanted to do that in future so that was a useful thing to learn a good skill to have i just didn't enjoy it we had to read a paper and answer some questions based on the paper for one of our um, modules, the immunology one. So we read part of the paper, had to understand what was going on in it in order to then answer questions. There are probably fewer labs because you just get them per module. So you'll go in like two days at a time, or maybe you'll go in once a week for a few weeks, as opposed to the regular slot that you get in first year. The labs themselves aren't necessarily any more difficult. They're probably exactly the same. It's all the same as in it, pipetting, using the spectrophotometer, like there's occasionally new equipment, but it's not that difficult. It's the write-ups themselves. That can be challenging. But as you can see, a very big variety of different like scientific skills. So tutorials, um, we basically didn't really have them. Not many people turned up to them. I found myself going a lot of the time and just like sitting there waiting for other people to turn up. And then he'd be like, how are you doing? I'd be like, yeah, great. And he'd be like, okay, hey, bye. And I'd just leave. Um, but the tutorials were essentially just like to support us, to go over things if we wanted to. I think he set like one or two pieces of work, like go and read this, come back and we'll analyze it because it might help you for this exam. We didn't really do a lot um, tutorial wise. The lectures were all one hour in second year. Um, and I had one every day. So I didn't have any days off last year. Um, I would say on average again, three hours and then on the days of labs it's they're like scheduled to be about six hour labs so how much time does it take second year how challenging is second year in terms of like time wise personally i would say it's however much time you put in um bare minimum probably about five hours extra a week um split across the seven days that is the absolute bare minimum you could do to get your coursework done and to like vaguely keep up with your notes. I would say that's how much I did. I'm not going to lie to you like that. I didn't do any more than the absolute bare minimum. And then I had to do a lot in revision time. Um, and that probably reflected in some of my results. And then in the subjects that I enjoyed, I'd put more time in um, and enjoyed revising them more and was better at them. So I did better in those. That's just how life works. Um, but it is definitely about how much time you put in. And if you are on campus, for example, I know at Bath, obviously we're not living on campus anymore. So if you go up at nine and you vow to stay until five, even if you don't have lectures the whole time and you do work in all those gaps, like you will do well and you will do better than if you just sack it off and go and sit in the SE. I had a difficult year last year. Like there was a lot going on last year, but I still managed to be on the committee for my society, be heavily involved in my society, have a social life and do okay at my degree. Um, the only thing was I didn't get to do YouTube. So I would say that like you can have one big hobby, probably two if you count being on committee because that was a lot of work. Um, but you probably can't have a 
like a third hobby you, you ha would have to give up either your social life or your degree for that so that's entirely up to you but I managed to be busy and still do okay so you know you better than I know you. In terms of extra reading I would say that extra reading isn't necessary until revision but that it is a very good habit to get into and it will elevate your marks to getting first and stuff if you've covered all the basic content and then you then do the extra reading you can like bump yourself up so I would highly recommend getting into that habit especially because in final year for example a spoiler of next year's video I have a module where they heavily encourage us to not cover the topics that they do in the lectures and to do our own research um, so getting into that habit early is a very good idea. I would say the average day last year I would get up, um, get ready, go to campus for like my lecture, probably have a break in between where I probably wouldn't do that much, go to another one and then I'd probably have like a really fat amount of time before I started rehearsals um, if I only had let's say two lectures that day so I'd probably try and do some work and nor would do a bit of coursework or type up some notes but probably wouldn't end up doing that um, and would probably just like sit in the SU and then like go for a walk and go to the gym which I guess is good stuff to do or do my committee stuff um, but you need to like put some time for your work as well um, however yeah that my basic day wasn't all work 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 and don't think that it's going to be like that it's not you're going to have time to do things you like doing as well so I really hope I covered everything that you might want to know about second year of biochem and like what it's actually like to study it um, if you want to ask me any questions below feel free to do that and if you want an actual taste of my life and like I'm getting up and I'm going to this now and this is what we did in this lecture and now I'm doing this with my life. I do a lot of vlogs and I'm planning to do a lot more so stay tuned for that um, basically and I hope that you enjoyed this. See you very soon!